A French contractor named Louise evades the law by using his gravity powers. He is followed by Misaki Kirihara of the Tokyo police but manages to escape her men. Louise breaks his fingers as it's shown to be his remuneration for using his powers. However, he is confronted by the Black Grim Reaper who easily defeats and kills him. Later, the authorities find his body and mention a researcher named Chiaki who has recently gone missing. Now we see our hero, Li Shen Shen, entering his new home. He strangely fixes his landlady's TV just by touching it, and then he is shown to his room where he bumps into Chiaki, who is using an alias. She works as a woman of the night, but makes her escape when she realizes that the cops have come for her. She bumps into Li again, and he saves her by kissing her under the tree. Chiaki realizes that he is her neighbor from earlier and leaves immediately. Then she meets her colleague Jean, who tells her that Louise is dead. Suddenly, he tries to drug her, but Lee comes to her rescue once more. Then try to escape, but it's of no use, as the French contractors knock Lee off a bridge and apprehend Chiaki. Luckily, he managed to escape them again and bumps into Lee, who is still alive. He takes her home while she tells him about a new technology called ME that erases the memories of those who have come in contact with overpowered beings such as contractors and dolls. Ali drops Chiaki at her flat, but she doesn't want him to leave so he offers to run away with her. Suddenly they hear some footprints and they escape before they are caught. Then Chiaki states that she has confidential information about the Pandora system which is why she is a wanted girl. That's when we learn that Lee is actually working for the syndicate as he discusses the mission to kill Chiaki with his colleague Quan. The French contractors arrive and shoot at Chiaki but Lee takes her away. The couple gets close to each other and they try to make their way out of the city. But Lee takes Chiaki's memories and knocks her down. Meanwhile, Misaki's team finds the corpse of a woman and confirm that she is the real Chiaki. Then, the French contractors arrive and Lee changes into his alter ego Hei, who is the Black Grim Reaper. He reveals that he had killed Louise. And in another twist, the French agents reveal that Chiaki is just a doll with her memories. Lee is shot down, but then he reveals his true powers and kills everyone with ease. Surprisingly, the doll helps him out and sacrifices herself in the process. Now, Huan, Yin and a talking cat named Mao come to the scene. After which, Lee chases and kills Jean, who had tried to escape. Lee goes about his day, and then he meets with Mao, whose power is to possess the bodies of animals. He briefs Lee on the mission to meet Dr. Tahara, so our hero gets to work. Then we see Tahara's daughter, Mai, accidentally setting some clothes on fire. She is reprimanded by her father, but she argues with him, as he doesn't give her enough time, especially after the death of her mother. Now Mai evades Tahara and goes to chill with her friends. They invite her home, but she decides to go back to her dad, hoping to spend time with him for once. But Mai is disappointed when she finds an empty house, so she tries to cause trouble outside before Lee helps her out. Mai berates him at first, but then she reveals that she is very lonely. Lee decides to cheer her up by taking her to an amusement park, and they become friends. The next day, Mai shows Lee a glowing symbol inside her wrist, after which she becomes emotional and calls him her older brother. However, they are attacked by some assassins, so Lee fights them while Mai escapes. However, she gets cornered and instinctively burns everyone around her with her powers. Misaki is informed about this and then we see a contractor named Ruko who is looking for Mai. The fire girl also burns an entire bus by accident and struggles with her reality. We learn that she is actually a moratorium who will slowly turn into a contractor. Things get worse when Mai accidentally burns some people trying to help her, and then she is kidnapped by Ruko. He uses her as a bait to lure Tahara back to his former company, and then Lee confronts the doctor for using Mai as a sample for his experiments. Tahara states that Mai was always dangerous as a moratorium, but he had managed to restrict her abilities by using a special seed. However, the seed in her wrist is deteriorating, and even his other seed has died, so time is running out. Lee doesn't have time to listen to his story, so he sets out to save Mai. A tense sequence follows as Lee battles Ruko, but then Mai is taken hostage. That's when Tahara shows up and gives away the dead seed, after which he has an emotional moment with his daughter. Ruko kills the doctor, so Lee brutally kills him in return. This triggers Mai to burn the entire building, thus causing a massive explosion. 
Lee and the team decide to leave her alone so that the syndicate can handle the situation. MI6 agent November 11, also known as Jack Simon, tries to bust an illegal operation but is exposed by the goons, so he uses his ice powers to take care of them. The gang leader tries to run away, but he is stopped by his team consisting of agents April and July. Jack arrives soon after and freezes the Don to death. Having picked up the necessary information, Jack finds a contractor named Havoc and takes her to Mizaki. The scientists study Havoc as she has lost her vacuum powers that allowed her to kill thousands of people. Now Jack talks to Mizaki about transporting Havoc to a secret location. However, on their way, Jack learns that the CIA is approaching the helicopter carrying Havoc, so he tells his team to take care of the issue. Then he reveals that he's had Havoc with him the whole time, so Mizaki suggests going to the Pandora headquarters. However, they run into Lee, who is in his Black Grim Reaper avatar. He and Jack engage in a fierce duel, while Mizaki and her colleague Saito are knocked out by some gas. Havoc is taken away by Lee's team, so Mizaki is ordered to get her back. Suddenly, she and Jack are alerted about BK-201, which is the code name allotted to Lee's alter ego. Meanwhile, Huang and Mao realize that Lee has taken Havoc away for a personal interrogation. He refers to her as Carmine and demands to know about his sister Pai, whom he had lost after an incident at Hell's Gate. However, Havoc says that she knows nothing about Pai or her colleague Amber. Then, she mocks Lee for being emotional, as contractors are only supposed to kill and aren't known to have feelings. Meanwhile, Jack and his girls get the location for Havoc and team up with Misaki so that they can get their target back. Havoc thinks back to some memories and wakes up next to Lee, who has cooked some food for her. She doesn't even have enough strength to lift a spoon, so Lee helps her eat. Havoc smiles for the first time in years and asks Lee to take her to Hell's Gate so that she can get her powers back. However, she also asks him to kill her if she goes back to her former self. As Jack and the team make their way to the target location, Lee takes Havoc to the gate. However, she gets triggered and starts to regain her powers, after which she struggles with her sensations and begs Lee to kill her. He refuses to do so, but then they are confronted by Jack's team. Lee tries to reassure Havoc that everything will be fine, but Jack suddenly kills her with his ice powers. Lee puts Havoc to rest and then he becomes Hay to confront Jack. They fight for a bit and Lee gets trapped at first, but he manages to wound his opponent and escape. Later, Misaki reveals that Havoc has regained her powers but chose not to use them when she was attacked. Now we see a contractor named Ukiyama Norio possessing an employee of a cosmetics company. After killing him, Norio sniffs his victim's perfume as his remuneration. Then, we meet private investigator Kurosawa Gai who tries to give us a cool introduction but is interrupted by his assistant Kiko. They get into an argument but then a widow arrives to offer them a job. She wants to find her missing cat, me, and Guy is a little hesitant, but the widow offers a lot of money, so Kiko makes him accept it. Later, they dine at a restaurant and see Lee feasting on a lot of food. After a long day of failed investigations, Guy meets the widow and she tells him about her late husband Yuzuki, who was a perfumer. Guy checks out the house and runs into Lee again, but the widow says that he's just a part-time worker. Guy learns that the widow was a second wife to Yuzuki, who was previously married to Toshiko. The widow suspects her to be the culprit, and then she hilariously cleans Guy's ears. At night, Lee and Mao bump into Norio and fight him, but he tries to possess Lee's body, so Mao saves him. Norio escapes in the middle of the chaos, but the next day he accidentally switches jacket with Guy at the cafe. As the detective checks out Toshiko's house, he finds Mao and captures him, thinking that he has found me. However, he also comes across the dead body of Toshiko. Guy alerts the cops about it, but is ridiculed and sent away. The detective goes to the widow to update her about the case, but learns that the cat he got isn't me. A creepy maid returns Mao to Guy, after which Norio confronts him as he wants his coat back. Guy suspects something fishy, so he refuses to give in, but Norio simply possesses his body. Mao suspects something important is in the code, so he tries to snatch it by possessing a bird, but he hilariously crashes into the bridge. Luckily, Lee comes to the rescue and is about to kill Norio, but then he switches bodies and makes his escape, while the Black Grim Reaper rescues the others. Later, the team learns that Norio seems to have possessed another contractor named Amitab Kapoor, which is why he has two powers. Meanwhile, Guy confronts his client as he thinks that she had killed Toshiko, 
but she reveals that the former wife was already dead when she had gone to see her. As the widow explains her husband's obsession with Toshiko's body odor, Lee tricks Norio into a trap and kills him. That's when we learn that Norio's original form was actually Yuzuki, as he sniffs on his sock before he dies. At night, Richard Lau meets Misaki and offers information on a target known as VL-952. However, he spots some blood on his t-shirt and is mysteriously killed in front of Misaki. She grows frustrated with the case, but then her dad arrives and takes her to dinner. However, Misaki chooses to go to a hotel owned by Ching Long Tan, also known as Mr. Wang, as he was Lau's boss. Later, Misaki meets her childhood friend Alice and her bodyguard Wei Ji Jin. It's Alice's birthday, so she asks Misaki to join her as she makes her way to a private area. We learn that Alice is Wang's daughter while she dresses up Misaki for the party. A flashback shows us how they became friends when Misaki stopped Alice from smoking too much. The party begins and Misaki is surprised to see Saito in disguise, after which Lee is also shown to be working as a steward. However, both the undercover agents are taken to clean the dishes. After a few awkward moments, Misaki spots some executives and wants to go after them, but then Alice stops her and mentions VL-952. She takes her friend to the Crystal Stone Flower Garden and surprisingly attacks her. Mizaki is shocked to see that Alice has killed her own father, and then she learns that Wei is VL-952. We see the contractor killing his executives by spilling blood on them, as that is his remuneration. Now Alice is about to kill Mizaki, but Lee saves her just in time. Alice taunts her friends and keeps shooting around the place, so Mizaki takes Lee and runs away when she runs out of bullets. Alice shuts down the building and orders Wei to take care of the situation, while Mizaki tries to understand why she was betrayed by her friend. Lee calms her down, after which he reunites with her Saito. Misaki's team is alerted about the attack, so they sort out the warrants while Wei and Alice gets busy with each other. Saito decides to sneak Misaki under a table, while Lee switches to Grim Reaper mode and retrieves the crystal flower. However, he runs into Wei, and they fiercely battle each other. The villain seemingly dominates Lee and knocks him off the building when he gets some blood on his body. The cops eventually take over the building, so Alice corners Misaki and Saito. However, Wei arrives and kills her as he believes that she will always remain dependent on him. As Wei is about to kill the couple, Lee makes an appearance and reveals that he had simply tricked Wei into believing that he was dead. The villain is taken down instantly with a lightning blast and then Lee escapes with a crystal flower. Now, we see our hero meeting a girl named Moku as they make their way inside the Pandora research facility. This is actually a covert mission to retrieve a meteor fragment as even the CIA is after it. Lee manages to trick the system and clears the entrance test but notices Maku acting very strange. She is tasered and taken away after which he is taken into the sweeper team led by Kikuchi. Here, they meet Dr. Sergei and his assistant Mina, who intentionally bumps into Lee and leaves him a message. She is shown to be a syndicate insider as she offers some intel to Lee regarding the meteor fragment. Now Lee sneaks into a forbidden room and is confronted by Dr. Nick Hillman, but her hero reasons that he has the same telescopes as the ones in the room. Nick takes him to the rooftop to show some stars and the duo bonds for a bit. Nick reveals he has a sick sister whom he wants to take into space so Lee wishes him the best. Time passes by, but Mako continues to see visions and acts crazy. One night, she is murdered in the forbidden room and Lee is taken for questioning as Kikuchi points to him as the culprit. Lee proves his innocence but expresses some frustration and this surprises Mina as she did not expect to see an emotional contractor. We learned that Mako was a CIA insider sent to hand over the meteor fragment. So it is assumed that her murderer possesses it now. Later, Sergei carries out a search surveillance in front of the workers, but Lee is shocked to see Pi when the doctors locate the meteor fragment's radiation. Lee has a hallucination of his past with his sister, but Kikuchi snaps him out of it and takes him away. Then Lee meets Mina, who seems to know what he's going through, so she offers help. Lee is unmoved, so Mina makes her way out, but is caught by Kikuchi. Luckily, she talks her way out of it, but is betrayed by Lee for being reckless. Later, Sergei sends some men to look for the meteor fragment, but everyone is killed except for Nick. This makes Mina suspect the doctor, so she talks to Lee about it. Later, Nick attacks a security officer, and he is revealed to be a contractor with electricity powers just like Lee. 
our hero confronts him, and then Nick shows him the meteor fragment, thus proving that he had killed Maku. Lee and Nick fight for a bit, but their powers are evenly matched, so Nick runs away. Lee chases after him, but gets distracted when he sees an illusion of Pi. Nick holds him at gunpoint, but then the fragment is activated and Nick's dreams come true when he takes off with his sister to space. It turns out that Sergei knew about Nick the whole time, and this upsets Lee, but he decides to spare him. Then the team asks the Black Grim Reaper to take a break while a mysterious girl spies on him. And that's the end of part 1. Like, share and subscribe if you want to see part 2 soon. Hit the bell icon for notifications. See you later!